I'm Ryan Herrera. You know me, CHGO Cubs. Go follow us on Twitter, at CHGO underscore Cubs. I got with, uh, Justin Steele here with me, power lefty of the Cubs. Hopefully a rotation piece, but uh, <laughs> Justin, um, you know, how has the beginning of spring training been for you? Uh, it's been great. It's been really good to get back in the locker room with the guys and you know start building on them relationships once again. It's just a really good energy around the facility. It's a lot of fun to be back around with the team. What was uh, you know, what were you up to the you know the 99 days of the lockout? You can't come down here, train at the facility. What's uh, what did that look like for you? Uh, I spent a lot of time back home in Mississippi. Me and Libby. Um, doing some you know, fishing, video games, normal stuff, and then we came out here right after Christmas to uh, go ahead and get situated in our apartment and start preparing for spring. Did you meet up with, uh, with anyone out here? Uh, yeah, I was, uh, once I got out here, I started training with Albert Alzale and Brad Wick. Brad Wick, well, so what were those training sessions like? Was it just you all just throwing bullpens or what was you know, it? Yeah, like? I mean, we all kind of did our own thing as far as lifting weights go. We all had our own uh, regimen that we were doing, and then on bullpen days were Tuesdays and Fridays, so all three of us would throw bullpens that day. Okay. Uh, and so were you around Adbert? Like, were you there when that, that you know, the injury, the pain, he started feeling in it? Yeah, I actually was. Okay. Yeah. So what was that, like, what was that, yeah, that situation? Uh, it was obviously not the best situation, yeah. but, um, you know, he was throwing his the thing was he was looking electric he was looking great everything was fantastic like you know was looking very crisp better than he ever has and you know just one pitch kind of felt something didn't feel right he shut it down immediately and then um you know started you know tr trying to figure out what it was and then i uh, was obviously got the mri and that news and stuff but i think he's going to come back better he's a hard worker very tough mentally and physically so i think he's going to come back even better and everybody's gonna be more thankful for it we did talk about that a little bit yesterday, and I know you know you guys started in Arizona together, you know, mm -hmm. kind of went through a system. So I know you, you have a little bit of a deeper connection with him than some of the other guys on the team. So what, just as you know, what is one? What has that connection been like with him, like building that friendship over the years, but also just, um, you know, seeing him, seeing one of your best friends kind of go down, and and you know, I, he's not down in the dumps ever, but um, you know, maybe not feeling as upbeat as he usually is. Yeah. So me and him, I was drafted by the Cubs in 2014. I was sent here to. Uh, Arizona for rookie ball and that's when he came over from Venezuela and um, we were in the rotation here in rookie ball together and then we just kind of moved up the ladder together and we were in the same rotation for years Eugene South Bend Myrtle Beach and then once we got to Myrtle Beach is when I had Tommy John surgery mm -hmm. he uh, kept on moving up the ranks and I had to be out for a year and then I came back after Tommy John yeah, and then we yeah. both you know now we're here you know now we're both in the big leagues and uh, it's, a, it's honestly a dream come true, you know. We talked about these things, yeah. you know, coming up through the system together, pitching together throughout our careers and whatnot, so it's really special. Yeah, so he got here a couple of years before you. Mm -hmm. uh, what was that like, 2021, getting that call, you know, getting, getting brought up? I know you came up as a reliever, but, um, you know, getting that first taste of the big leagues with Adbert by your side. Oh, it was amazing. And I think my – I don't think my debut was when he pitched that game, but I, one of the first times I ever pitched, I came in after he did, and we, I, he ended up getting the win. It was really cool. And then there was a game against the Twins when I got my first win as a starter, I believe. He came in after me and pitched like four shutout innings after I threw five shutouts. So it's, it's just really yeah, cool yeah. seeing one of your best friends come in after you or me coming in after him and uh, pitching together in the same yeah. big league game. Yeah. Was that, that that Minnesota game? Was that all you started that game? Didn't yeah. You? And then he came in, right? Okay, yeah. Um, so moving on, but we're you know we're three ish weeks out of, of the start of the regular season. I know games start tomorrow. Um, you know what is kind of your mindset going in? What are you coming in here to do for the next three weeks? You know to get ready, to get ready for the season, but also to kind of you know prove yourself as maybe a rotation piece for uh, Grandpa Rossi. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm here to pitch. I'm here to play baseball. I'm here to get, get guys out. I'm going to go out there and compete and, you know, do exactly what I'm supposed to do. Um, you know, wherever the Cubs see best fit for me to help the team, that's where I want to be. I'm not going to say I should be this or I should be that. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm here to compete and get people out. So where would uh, where'd you get your work ethic from? Like who, who's probably the most like influential person on like the way you work as a, as a baseball player, just a person? Um, so when I was – First came into the organization, John Lester was the big guy on, like, around here, so I really watched him a lot, how he went about his business. And then, um, you know, growing up, I really loved Tom Glavin. I loved watching him pitch, that whole, whole Atlanta Braves rotation yeah. when he was there. I loved watching all of them. And then um, kind of like the Phillies when they were winning the uh, World Series, I think it was 2008. And they had uh, Cole Hamels, Roy Holiday, just a bunch of studs in that rotation. That was another rotation I really – Grew up watching. 
I was hoping you were going to say a, a former Alabama football player that uh, might have played under Bear Bryant. You want to talk about that? Uh, uh, I mean, that my dad, I mean, yeah, he taught me how to compete <laughs> for sure. Um, yeah, my dad played football at Alabama in 84. Bear Bryant recruited him. Um, but, yeah, I mean, he, he de- growing up, it was always a competition around the house because I had an older brother, and that, him and my dad used to just beat me in everything. So, like, ping pong, pool, whatever it was, basketball, I was getting my brains beat in for a little bit. But then once I got bigger and got a little got a little taller, and you know, I started getting started beating them. All right. So now, you know, you're coming in. You got, you got three weeks of spring training. You got opening day coming up. I mean, what's the message to Cubs fans that, you know, especially after last year, the trade deadline, the sell off, you know, maybe things look a little bleak or the fans, you know, don't know what to expect. So what's your message to, to Cubs fans that want something to, to want a reason to tune in on opening day? Oh, I mean, I think we have a ton of stuff to look forward to. I think this is going to be a great season, a lot, a lot of fun and cool stuff, a lot of cool players to watch and stuff. I think going to Wrigley Field is going to be a blast this year. I think we got a really good team and it's going to be a lot of fun. All right, thank you, Justin. Everyone, thank you for tuning in. This is Ryan Herrera again, allchgo.com. Go check out my stuff. Follow us on Twitter at chgo underscore Cubs. Thank you, Justin, for joining us. Thank you. We'll see you soon. Thank you.